If you've been a long time follower of my channel, around three years ago I uploaded a video showing this spotlight. This spotlight I picked up at my local restore. It was another one of those incredible deals. It was brand new and I only paid around 10 bucks. It's extremely well made. It has a glass lens on the front. I did take out the halogen lamp and installed an LED lamp instead, but it was only a spotlight and I wanted it to have a lot more features. So what I did is I added this high powered strobe light. I added a port for USB charging. And if you go all the way around to the opposite side, you can see there's a dual switch. So one position is going to turn on the strobe light. And if you push it the other direction, it's going to turn on this long LED cob strip light. And it gives off a lot of light to light up an area. I also added a 12 volt accessory socket. This particular spotlight is powered using a sealed lead acid battery. It's located behind this cover, which I'll show you in a minute. I've been wanting to replace it with something better. So in this video, what I'm going to be doing is removing the 12 volt sealed lead acid battery from this unit and making a replacement battery using lithium iron phosphate cells. I'm going to show you exactly how it's done each step. So to get started, let me remove these screws so we can pop this cover off the back. Many newer lights use plastic that's made to look like aluminum, but this strip of metal here and the strip of metal on this side is made of extruded aluminum. Let me slide this battery out. Now I soldered it to the terminals, so let me desolder this, pop it out, then I'll show you the lithium iron phosphate cells that we're going to be putting together to make a battery pack. Okay, let's just desolder one at a time. And then slide it on out. And you can see it's a decent sized battery. So let's move this out of the way. So the sealed lead acid battery that was used inside this unit is a 12 volt 7 amp hour. This battery does have a lot of weight to it, so I want to get the weight of the battery pack lower, but still have good capacity and good cycle life. So let me show you the cells that I'm going to be using to put together a battery pack. The four Litokala 32700 cells that you see right here are the exact same cells that were tested in a previous video. I purchased these on AliExpress. I wasn't sure if the capacity was going to be too good, but after seeing how well these tested in the previous video, I decided to use them for this application. Now the light that I have is only going to draw a maximum of around two and three quarter amps to power the LED spotlight. And I also have the accessory socket on the side that I'd like to be able to supply up to 10 amps. So right there is 13. And if I wanted the Cobb LED strip light on at the same time, that only draws around 125 milliamps. So these cells are ideal for my application. When these cells are fully charged using a BMS or battery management system, battery management board, these cells are going to have a fully charged voltage of around 3.6 each. So four of those at 3.6 is going to make 14.4 volts. I'm going to take each one of these, I'm going to line them up side by side, like this. All right, of course the tabs are going to be in the correct position. They're going to be connected into a block, just like you see right there. The board I'm going to be using is an HX4S. 4S means four cells in series. F30A. 30A means good up to 30 amps. This one's designed to charge the lithium iron phosphate cells up to around 3.6 or maybe 3.7 volts. Make sure you use the right board for the type of cell you're using. You do not want to use one that's designed for a lithium ion because the voltage output per cell is going to be much higher. And then you don't want to use this one here for lithium ion because you're not going to fully charge each one of the cells. I'll post a link in the video description area where you can get the two different boards. The purpose of this board is to ensure that each one of the cells, when they're connected in series, that they're charged equally. You do not want to have one cell charging more than the other. And if you just take all four cells and connect them from end to end and apply 15 volts across all the cells, what's going to end up happening 
Because the internal resistance for each one of the cells can vary, you can end up with one cell being overcharged and another cell being undercharged. So this is going to make sure that each one of the cells that are connected in series are charged properly. This board is also going to make sure you do not over discharge the cells to damage them and it's also going to protect against excessive current discharge. Now there's one thing I want to show you. Right over here this connector is not usually soldered to the board. You don't have to have it but I like it so I soldered it in and you can see right here in this clip using 6040 solder you solder each one of those pins in and you can see what the front side looks like as well as the back side when it's complete. Each one of these pins corresponds also to a different pad. So if you're going to be using a higher charge current, in my case I'll only be using 3 amps so this is sufficient, but if you're going to be using higher you may not want to use this and you can solder directly to these pads. Now before I show you how this is wired, I want to show you one other thing. You see this component right over here? It looks like a resistor, but it's not. It has a zero on it. A zero indicates that it's a jumper. It's simply shorting the connection between one side and the other. It's making it a closed circuit. Over here you can see it says T1 and T2. Now I'm going to be using this. This means thermal. We're going to have a sensor inside the battery pack and I have a whole bunch of these right here and these are used in electric motors. I think this is a 55 degrees Celsius but it's going to be connected right up to the side of one of the cells in between the four. I'm going to put a little thermal compound and then using captain tape I'm going to secure this very tightly to the cell. This other side right here is going to be stripped soldered to T1 and T2. This is normally closed when it gets too hot it's going to open the circuit. So in order for this to work what you have to do is you need to desolder that jumper right here. Once that's desoldered the circuit is now opened. When you solder this in position it's going to be closed until this gets too hot. Let me go over the schematic with you quickly so you know exactly what to do. Right here you can see each one of those lithium iron phosphate cells connected in series. This connector right over here shows battery negative B1, B2, B3, B4. So you're going to take the black wire which is the negative connect it to the negative. B1 goes to the junction between the positive and negative right between the cells. The yellow goes between these cells, the gray between these cells and the red B4 goes to battery positive. You're also going to have to take a heavier wire. In my case I'm going to be using 16 gauge and I'm going to connect it between this positive point here and battery positive. Solder it directly to this pad. Take the negative and solder it to battery negative. This connection here cannot handle the excessive amount of current that's going to be flowing from these cells so that's why you have to do that. Over here is power positive, power negative just like the terminals on the sealed lead acid battery you're going to be pulling power from the cells at this point and you're going to be charging the cells from this point. It's recommended 0.5C when you charge these cells so I'm going to be using a 3 amp charger. You're going to want to use at least a 14.5 volt power supply to fully charge the cells. Okay now that you see how everything's going to be wired let's get going. Right here is the 16 gauge stranded copper wires that I'll be using. The captain tape 3 quarter inch wide and the 15 volt 3 amp switch mode power supply. To make it easier for you to find these items I'll place links in the video description area. There we go. It's right on the tip of the soldering iron. The next thing you're going to do is remove the heat shrink tubing from each one of the cell ends. Just take a razor blade, make a slit and pull them off. Okay with the heat shrink removed I'm now able to set up three of these cells in the correct position. Right here you can see the positive end of one cell is tied directly into the negative of another. You're just going to fold the tabs back as you see right here 90 degrees. Fold that one over. Make sure there's an overlap. Be sure to place cardboard underneath the connection because when you solder this you do not want excessive heat damaging the wrap of the cell. The way I'm setting mine up right here is going to be the positive for the battery pack. 
So that's going to be this red wire. Eventually it's going to be connected right here. And the one next to it is the white. So this white wire is going to be held in position right here and I'm going to solder this connection. And this connection here is now complete. The next thing I'm going to do is take a piece of captain tape and put one layer around the bottom of the two cells. Both the cells are now secured at the opposite end using the tape. Now looking at the diagram, you can see the white wire, which is gray in this image. That's soldered to the correct location. Now the next one is going to be the yellow. The third cell is now soldered in position and you can see the yellow wire is connected to that point. In order to figure out the positioning of the thermal cutoff on the fourth cell, I want to make sure the tabs are in the correct position. And right there looks pretty good. So the thermal cutoff is going to go halfway down right on this side. Apply some thermal compound. That's pretty good. Take that and center right there. Now I'm going to tape it. And this last wire is connected in the correct position. One drop of rosin flux, maybe two, that's good. And you can see how nicely this connection flowed together. Let me finish connecting the positive and negative to the battery pack and the thermal cutoff to the board. Now I'm going to solder the 16 gauge red wire to the pad marked battery positive. And now the white 16 gauge wire to battery negative. Okay guys, this battery pack is now complete. The only thing I have to do now is just cover up the end with a piece of cardboard this end as well as this end and then when that's done I could connect right here power positive power negative I'm going to connect it up directly to the wires inside the spotlight let me finish covering this up so you can see how it looks when it's complete right here is the completed battery pack you can see this cardboard on each end and the easiest way to get that cardboard is from a box of cereal just trace out the shape. And right here you can see the lithium iron phosphate battery pack was slid all the way inside the unit. I have foam padding on the side, the bottom, and the top to keep it from moving around. Right over here is where I connected the positive and negative. That's going to fold down and then slide the door up. Lift this up. Good. Tighten the screw down securely. Okay, it's all back together. Let's try the strip light first. Nice and bright. Now it's going to be hard for you to see it, but let me spin this around. And the strobe light is probably going to be really tough to see because of the shutter speed of the video camera, but let's give it a try anyway. I'm not seeing the strobe on the camera, but I am seeing a flash on the overall image. So that's working good. And right here, we could try the high beam. That's the first setting, and then higher right there. Okay, spin that back around. Let me take a look at the voltage out of this accessory socket. 13.37. All right, let me plug in the charger, and let's see if the voltage begins to climb. If it does, that's going to indicate that the battery pack is charging. We should see the voltage climbing, let's see. Yep, and that's working well. 
Let me let this charge up for a little bit and see if it turns off at a certain point. Hopefully charging stops between 14.4 and 14.8 volts. All right, it's been charging for about 45 minutes. Let's take a look at the voltage. 14.34, and that sounds pretty good to me. Let me let this sit for five more minutes and take a look at that reading. If it doesn't go up, that means we leveled off and the battery management system is working fine. I waited 10 minutes. Let's see if the flow of current is almost done into the battery pack. Yep, 34, 35. All right, so the battery management system is doing its job. And guys, that is it. Hopefully now you know how to make your own lithium iron phosphate battery pack after watching this video. Be sure to rate thumbs up, subscribe, and check out my extensive video playlist for many other videos of interest to you. Thank you very much for watching.